Hello, I want to show you something. Um, right now I have a two by two by one inch neodymium iron boron immersed in just normal sink water, not distilled water or anything like that. And uh, it's uh, sitting inside a high uranite uranium cup made out of glass. This is actually the highest radioactivity uranite glass that I've ever found. I don't want to show the effect of a specific optical effect that I found until another video, but uh, I'd like to talk about something really simple in understanding the magnetic field because every scientist out there, right now I actually have some ferrofluid. You can see this black ring around this block magnet. Once again, like I said, it's two by two by one inch neodymium. First, let me show you something neat. You see this green glass? Let me turn off the light and then turn on a UV light, but I'd like to save this fascinating effect for another video. It's a neat, really neat optical effect. Let's turn that off, and then let's turn on the UV light. There we go, without dropping it in the water. I electrocute myself. Here you can actually see it. I have to introduce another magnet to show you this effect, but uh, my Geiger counter shows that this specific uranite glass has extremely high uranium content, emitting a lot of beta and gamma radiation. Yes, indeedy. Yeah, I would not want to drink from that cup. Let's turn that off here. Let's talk about magnetism in a way that's really simple so that anybody can understand it. And then I'll do a demonstration with uh, some simple ferrofluid here in a pipette. As you can see here on this block magnet, the ferrofluid is ringing the neodymium along the edge. Now, if you were to ask anybody, including every PhD physicist on Earth, and I literally do mean every single one, they will tell you, well, a magnet is magnetism. It's like, well, that's a nice description, but it's not an explanation. And that wouldn't explain this effect. Why? Now, we all have the belief that the center of something is the strongest of something, right? When you get away from anything, and there are countless thousands of examples like that in Mother Nature, when you get away from the periphery, into the periphery of something, you have the weakest of something. The closer you get, the stronger it gets, right? Well, just ask that to any scientist or anybody else. We sure we know what magnetism is. Okay, well, what about a magnet? You know, let's not talk about magnetism because I know you can't answer that one. What's a magnet? Well, a magnet is surrounded by a magnetic field. So the center of a magnet should be the strongest magnet. Yes, exactly right. So why is it when you take a ferromagnetic fluid which has extremely high magnetic permeability, and of course it accelerates, and that's all ferrofluid is. It's a nanoparticle iron um, particulate that's uh, suspended in a type of oil. Um, why do you have, and I'm gonna rub the edge of the magnet here, to prove that, and you can see I'm getting my finger black there. It's not uh, toxic. Now this beta and gamma radiative glass is toxic, but I'm not drinking out of it. You see there? Why is it, and ask yourself this, and ask your uh, physics professor. You see, it's okay not to know the answer to things, but when scientists and professors think they know, no one's ever gone looking to the answer to the things that they think they know the answer to. Just ask anybody, it's like, well, this two by two by one inch neodymium, this doesn't matter what Gauss rating it is. This one's an N42 Gauss. So this is completely irrelevant. It has a really powerful block magnet that'll break your fingers if you got your fingers between it and a refrigerator, for example. Why is it that the ferroaccelerative fluid and ferrofluid, and it wouldn't matter if it was steel, doesn't matter, because you stick a steel bearing on this uh, magnet, it will also, too, accelerate to the periphery. Yeah. You ever been one of those... Um, uh, carnival rides where you actually get in and it's a spinning drum and everybody is uh, flung up the around the inside periphery of it kind of like uh, in your washing machine in the spin cycle all the clothes are spun up around the inside of the drum on the spin cycle like your dryer you know your dryer spins around and it goes fast enough and then all the clothing is you know pressed firmly up against the inside well that's exactly what we have here the center of a magnet there is hardly no magnetism. You actually, and this is measurable by a Gauss meter. Right here, because a magnet is not a magnet. And they see that doesn't make any sense. Superficially, if you were to tell somebody a magnet is not a magnet, they would think that you're insane. It's like, well, no, let's work it out logically and let's apply platonic retroduction logic wisdom to this. A magnet is not a magnet so much as it is a dielectric device. 
and just like uh, your washing machine or your dryer that uh, flings the clothes up around the edge, the actual lowest pressure mediation of Mother Nature's magnet and magnetism is very, very weak here in the center and increases, increases, and it's strongest right here. So this ferrofluid, yeah, this staining stuff, it doesn't stain that bad, is exactly like uh, the clothes in your washing machine and your dryer. The magnetic field, and of course it accelerates towards the strongest um, magnetic permeability of the magnetic field of this magnet. You see, this is a magnet. Well, magnet does magnetism. Well, that's half the story. Yes, it is. Kind of like light, half the story of light is light. The other half of the story of light is illumination. So, you stupidly think of light only as the principle, that being light, and not address its attribute, that being illumination. It would be as equally stupid to address a magnet as having magnetism. That's what everybody on planet Earth, 110% of everybody on planet Earth thinks and believes. And that's partially true, but it's only half the story. Enough Logomaki, but think about that a second. So I'm going to do is I have this uh, water. Let me get a close-in view here. You'll actually see whirlpool eddies, since this is actually a few millimeters um, above the surface of the magnet. Let me actually... Let me zoom out just a little bit here. Sorry about that. There we go. And I'll actually drop. Let me zoom in if you can see if you can see the whirlpool eddies forming. You'll actually notice, and I'll try not to disturb the water, that the ferrofluid doesn't like the center of the magnet. It's creating, you look at them, you'll see the whirlpool eddies, you see them right there? Whirlpool eddies forming around it as it actually vortexes itself. This is very, very, very fine stuff. It's a nanoparticle. Iron particles will actually create little vortex eddies right around here, around the magnet, and it vortexes its way down, whirlpools its way down to the surface. And you notice, yes, actually the only reason why there's any brown spot on the center of this is because I smeared it before and I've done this experiment a couple times. Um, but there's no nanoparticles of iron here where it's slightly brown. All the nanoparticles are right here. Let's do that again. Let me here it happens kind of fast, right? There we go. There we go. Look for the whirlpool eddies, and I'll try to hold the camera steady here. Now, ask any scientist why the ferromagnetic, high magnetic permeability nanoparticles in the ferrofluid are only interested in this zone of the magnet. Ask them why. Say, Excuse me, Mr. Scientist, the center of something, the strongest, the center of a magnet would be more powerful than the periphery, would it not? Well, yes, that would be where the strongest magnetic field would be present. Well, just the opposite is the case. Excuse me, Mr. Scientist, it turns out just the opposite is the case, so it might turn out to be, not only do you not understand what magnetism is, but you definitely don't know what the hell a magnet is by definition. And a magnet by definition is not quantitative, it is qualitative. So what's the qualitative nature and conjugate nature of a so-called magnet that all of science does not understand? The answer is so divinely simple. No one's thought about this because, well, it doesn't really make a money, you know, it doesn't do a lot of stuff that people hold very important, but I've always been different. I've always taken the other path of typical humanity and that understanding the fundamental principle of the entire universe, which is magnetism and dielectricity, is of paramount importance. Look for the vortex eddies. You can really see them over there. Let me actually just stay zoomed in and I'll do that again, okay? I uh, lift the magnet. You see my fingers are stained. Lift the magnet out of the water, disturb the water. You can actually see it raised up on the edge here. Yeah, my fingers are getting dirty. You see the edge, there's a lip. There's no lip on the magnet. That lip is the, uh, quite expensive by the way, ferrofluid, which I'm gonna wipe off and throw in the garbage. Waste of some nice expensive ferrofluid. You see that lip around the edge? Ask any scientist. Excuse me, Mr. So-called scientist, Mr. Self-proclaimed genius. 
Mr. Hubristic uh, pseudo-intellectual mental midget of sophistry and atomism. Excuse me, sir. I have a PhD on the wall. You have no idea what you're talking about. Excuse me, sir. Why is it that ferromagnetic fluid, or it could be iron balls. I mean, it works the same if you have little uh, iron uh, BBs on here. It does exactly the same. Why is it accelerative towards the edge of the magnet? Shouldn't it be accelerative towards the center? And the center is nothing. The brown roundness at the center here is actually just the oil suspension of the ferrofluidic nanoparticles themselves. Watch this. Oh, they love this stuff. Look at that. You can't get an answer out of them because they haven't got a clue. And it's okay not to know. It's okay. Let me repeat, it's okay not to know. Well, when people pretend to know stuff, then they fool themselves because no one ever goes looking for the answer to something that they think they know the answer to. Let me try that again. That again. Okay, let's uh, Of course, the water is disturbed right now. See the vortex eddies? You can really see it right there. Let's try a little bit more drastic. I need to do it further away. There we go. You see a clear spot forming right at the center here, at the surface of the water? That's because the center of this magnet is not where 99% of the magnetism is. 99% of the magnetism is not at the center of this really powerful frigging magnet. Not. Also too, you see this blue and chromatic area over here. I have to use a UV light and another magnet to show you that. Also too, you're getting a holographic effect and it also is connected with the gamma radiation. Like I said, once again, let's show you again that there's a strong beta and gamma radiation source vis-a-vis -vis this cup. You see that effect? Now take a look at this. I'm gonna explain this in another video. You see the, you see the bright, bright blue hue at the center of this magnet? Yes, you see that? You see the vortex, it's actually a holographic vortex. You see it at the center of this magnet? I know you can see it. You see that? Nobody's ever seen that before. And there's a reason for it. It has to do with the magnet and the beta and gamma radiation being emitted by this heinously radioactive cup. And by heinous, I mean way more radioactive than typical uranite. You see that blue vortex there? It's like a dark blue nova right at the center of the magnet. You see it? I knew you could see it. This part you're looking up here is just a reflection of the towel. We can ignore that. Right there. You see a lot more strongly with another magnet. So I guess I did show you that in this video, but just a little bit of it. There's a reason for that. There's a holographic vortex right there. And it has to do with both the gamma radiation, the magnetic field, and the ferrofluid, creating a neat holographic effect. But I'll explain that later. Right now, I just wanted to turn off the light. Man, if I drop that in there, I'd be electrocuted. Right now, I wanted you to see that. Also, too, you see this, if you just saw this video starting, you see it looks like a depression right there, like this magnet were like a marshmallow and soft and someone stuck their thumb right in the center of this magnet. Do you see that effect? Tell me you don't see that, okay? There's a reason for that. Remember that uh, vortex black spot at the center of a magnet underneath the ferro cell? Now, I've got nothing here other than water. A high beta and gamma radiation glass, as I've already proved to you, a strong magnet and ferrofluid. You see that, right? It's not actually there, but it looks like it there. And if I started this video right now, this right here, okay? I'm, not, I'm just using this as a pointing tool. Right here looks like a crater, right? Looks like a crater on the moon, doesn't it? Do you see that? 
No one's ever seen that before, ever, in any video. And guarantee you there's nothing on YouTube and nothing on the internet where someone takes a powerful magnet, a strong beta and gamma radiation source, ferrofluid, and just light. I don't need the UV light, I'm just using a regular uh, fluorescent light uh, behind my shoulder here. It looks like somebody, the magnet is a marshmallow when somebody stuck their thumb in the center and created a crater. I know you can see that, can't you? I keep saying that over and over again because I know you can see it. I know you can. Isn't that neat? True magnetoholography using a powerful magnet, a strong radiation source, which I don't like leaning over because it's emitting uh, a decent amount of beta and gamma radiation. <laughs> All you need is a powerful magnet, a, a radioactive source. Don't try this at home, kiddies. This stuff comes off your hand pretty easy, by the way. It's messy, but isn't that beautiful? It looks like uh, the magnet there is a crater on the moon. And uh, I wasn't planning on showing you. I don't want to explain it in this video because then I went to make the video three times longer than this, but uh, I hope you like this. You're the first person in the world to see that other than myself. And I'll explain that part later. This video is not about explaining or showing this part, but we got there anyway. So, isn't it simple? Oh, physics in the kitchen sink. Kitchen sink physics. Only thing you need is a magnet, a uh, beta and gamma radiation source, a UV light, <laughs> and some feral fluid. <laughs> oh, man. I love staring at this holographic crater. It's like you're looking at a holographic crater on the side of a magnet. This magnet is perfectly flat. Yeah, but it looks like there's a crater there. And it's being painted there, I say painted in a loose sense, because of the gamma radiation, the ferrofluid, and the magnetic field. And the dielectric portal. We call it a dielectric portal, all right? We call it a vortex. We can call it a sink. Yeah, screen capture this because nobody's seen that one before. You've seen it first. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you like these videos. I'm a poor schmuck. If you like these videos that uh, teach you things about... And this is really simple. You know, I'm doing this in my kitchen sink. If you like these videos, any donation is kindly welcome. I lead a simple life. And flare fluid's actually not all that cheap. It's going to take me 20 minutes to get this off my hands. Thanks for watching.